tried for two and a half years, three years, uh, solo founder, and very young. So I think there were a bunch of mistakes I made. Whenever there is a long weekend, wherever there is a festival, wherever there is a uh, celebration like Christmas, New Year, eat fit orders actually go down. Gyms were one of the most hated industries then, you know. Uh, it was shut for almost like 14, 15 months and uh, zero revenue. So I believe that for any success or any outcome, mediocre outcome, great outcome, you have to plan for a 10 to 20 year journey in a startup. Hello and welcome to My Way. My guest on the show today is Ankit Nagori. He is the founder of Cure Foods and he is a veteran in the startup ecosystem. Uh, he's of course runs a brand of a house of brands in the food space and a lot of popular brands that you might have heard of, whether it's Nomad's Pizza or Juno's Pizza, Sharif by Frozen Bottle and all the popular brands nowadays. It is I think 150 to 200 cloud kitchens that uh, you know they run in, at Cure Foods. Before this, Ankit was with Flipkart as well. Uh, Ankit, thanks a lot for joining. In. Very happy to be talking to you, Sonia. And a veteran, as I said, in the startup ecosystem. How's it been so far? Uh, so far, so good. It's been a longest journey now. Uh, I started to about 15, 16 years back when right after college, I started my own venture. And it didn't pan out the way I expected it to, uh, but it was great learning. And right after that, I joined Flipkart. And that was the real journey, if I may say. Uh, six and a half years there was, it felt like 20 years, to be honest. Uh, did a lot of stuff, which was path breaking, thanks to the wonderful team that we had. Uh, we had a very unique opportunity of doing a lot of firsts. And luckily, and of course, you know, with a lot of hard work, we all made it happen. A lot of new things happened. We became the first retailer to sell electronics on 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 online channel, you know, and we were selling uh, all kinds of stuff like TV, fridge, whatnot. And <clears throat> when we first started Big Billion Day, people thought it would be an absurd idea. No one can sell those many products a single day. Of course, we weren't very successful the first time around, but since then, Big Billion Day has become a brand where people just shop, you know, day in day out. So, I believe that what Flipkart did to the ecosystem, you know, just gave a full hope to the entire ecosystem of how they can create millions and millions of money and also you know create a lot of impact post that thanks to the play field that flipkart had created for all of us we were able to start new businesses a lot of us i started cult and now cure foods so you know, the whole uh, food tech space, right, has picked up in a big way. Now we have, what, 3 million orders a day across the ecosystem. Where do you see the next million customers come from? Yeah, so if you look at the journey of food tech in the country, Sonia, it started off with discount. A lot of people acquired customers, like many online platforms. The first movers were people who were deal seekers. They said, okay, same pizza which you are, dine out, you know, and pay extra rupees, you're getting a 30% discount and people start ordering in. But that was just the early mover thing. Then the real people came in, you know, real customers came in who were ordering in for a real use case. Like, not not having enough time to cook or you know having guests at home and they needed to cook the real bump up came of course during the pandemic when people were stranded and uh, without without cooks without wherewithal and they had to uh, find a way to feed themselves and zomato swiggy or uh, dominos all of these platforms became very big and that's where the real step jump happened so i think if i have to talk about the three phases of course first was the early mover discounted a new fad kind of a thing then came the real big use case where people figured out it's really convenient you know you can order stuff and it reaches you in 30 40 minutes and reaches in good quality and good shape otherwise you know uh, a lot of people are very circumspect about ordering food uh, outside uh, the earlier example of this would be just free home delivery by the restaurants and but you would not have tracking and all of that and then pandemic took it to 2 million plus orders i think the last 3 years has been more about consolidation about getting the real consumers who really need to use food tech i think a very fast emerging uh, segment are people who just don't want to cook at all and they figure out that you know cooking is a really really tough thing you have to have a place inside the house you know which is dedicated to cooking of course kitchen is called then you have to set up an ecosystem of cooks or you cook yourself of course uh, you have to get uh, raw material grocery on a daily basis it is tough and if you are a double income no kids family or you're even a single living in a city like bangalore you wouldn't want to spend your time on that so i think a very fast emerging segment is a segment who just thinks that cooking is not 
their cup of tea and they shouldn't be spending their time and energy on cooking and with a similar amount of time there are subscription platforms like us like other platforms where you just get the same similar type of food every day with a different menu so i think that will be a very large segment the next million consumers i think will come from people who are looking to eat out 30 to 40 times a month which means at least one meal a day and sometimes twice a twice a day and that's where i think the real paying consumers will also come in so you were saying that uh, you know now it's become all about daily convenience rather than earlier when people used to order only on special occasions yes. right so as we move to this daily convenience model um, where do you see the number grow to currently you have what 3 million orders a day yeah. a large chunk of it from zomato and swiggy but what do you see as the way forward see if i look at the total number of consumers in the food ecosystem my sense is about 3 to 4 crore people have ordered online at least once you know when you talk about food and uh, out of them at least 1 crore people are there who order every quarter so that adds up to a number where you know in top 6 cities 1 crore people are ordering on a regular basis ordering food online is their top of the mind but if you have to you know uh, add the next million consumers a day who order very very frequently you'll have to get at least 1 to 2 million consumers who are on subscription like platforms right now uh, at eatfit about 8000 of our orders uh, daily are subscription where customers are ordering almost once a day or 20 to 20 to 22 times a month because sometimes they don't order on weekends because they're home or something but if we can get to 10 to 20 lakh such customers who are ordering every day for a need of eating outside food rather than pleasure of eating outside food then this number will grow by 20 30% so i feel that the total universe of uh, people eating out right now is about 3 crore who have ordered at least once this number can grow to 3 and a half to 4 crores but the next 50 lakh to 1 crore people have to be the ones who are you know eating more frequently and is it more to do with fitness or do you think now the universe is expanding across the board i mean is fitness a, still a big priority or not quite see it's not uh, fitness for sure sonia it is more sustainable and more daily eating so uh, fitness food will be salads or high protein meals or what not but i feel that for a very large chunk of customers it's not sustainable you can't order a salad every day uh, unless you have a goal and it's 15 days 18 days 20 days whatever but if you really want consumers who order 250 times a year you need to have a selection of very homely daily food so what is eat fit eat fit is just daily thalis you know like indian food which is dal roti sabzi daily changing menu and you have rice as an option you have quinoa as an option all of those are there but people can eat that food every day because that's what they have grown up eating you know so you don't need to really invent a lot but of course we have salads and we have all kinds of meals but the highest frequency we see is in these indian meals and of course the south indian versions as well we have bisabeli bhat we have khichdi so we have all of these daily comfort food and i really feel that fitness food will be a small segment but daily food will be the largest tam so of the 3 4 crore people i'm talking about who may order uh, online i would say that half of them would be open to ordering this kind of food so you have several brands under yeah. cure foods right not just eat fit yes. there's sharif bai there's no man's pizza yes. there's frozen bottle uh, and you're doing sort of multiple things at the same time over the next 3 to 4 years where is your main focus going to lie right so uh, this is something which we figured during pandemic sonia that you know eat fit was a daily food brand and we figured that people had a lot of time to cook so our orders on a daily food brand actually went down while we thought that you know people will order a lot more because for them they had time to cook their food and basic food and the real bumper was happening during weekends for a lot of brands we know a lot of customers a lot of restaurants we know and we figured that for for customers who were cooped in inside their houses celebration was indoors so pizzas biryanis cakes these were the categories which really took off and uh, exactly that time we figured that we need more categories you know because whenever there is a long weekend wherever there is a festival wherever there is a uh, celebration like christmas new year eat fit orders actually go down and we have such large infrastructure of 200 plus kitchens so many chefs in the kitchens we need brands which can balance out the you know uh, the orders and that's where we decided to get into all of these categories uh, we could have built these categories but we figured that it's not very easy to build brands it is difficult it takes a lot of years it takes serendipity to build brands uh, we figured out some of these 
partners uh, you know like nomad pizza and sharif bhai which are now part of the e- uh, cure foods ecosystem we saw that they were doing extremely well and but they were all single city a few kitchen brands and we got them on board and now they're multi city multi kitchen because we have that infrastructure which they can ride on so i also noticed that of course you're a veteran in the e-commerce space but now you're also getting into the offline format yeah. with casual dining nomad yes. pizzas have multiple yes. outlets etc do you think that to sustain this online business model you also need that sort of offline presence absolutely absolutely i think for any brand to be an online only brand either they need to be a super power like dominos well they also are online and offline both or you need to have infinite marketing budgets we are none of them right now you know so we have to uh, build a right mix of offline and online uh, offline business allows you to cater to customers who are not ordering online like i said or in entire country only 3 4 crore people would order online or have ordered online because others don't need to but then how do you cater to them but more importantly if you build offline locations it builds trust people can put a place to the name that okay this is the place where i order from and also uh, for at least 30% of the week days or 30% occasions on the week days whether it's a friday evening or a sunday brunch people would step out you can't not imagine them stepping out and you completely miss out on those customers if you weren't an online offline offline also brand so yeah so uh, you know just talking a little bit about your own journey right you're uh, sort of a startup veteran you started with youth pad about yeah. 15 years ago yeah. then went on to become the chief business officer at flipkart and then of course now you're doing cure foods what has your biggest learning been through it all I think learning one thing which I really talk about is that everything takes a lot of time and uh, things can get very boring and that's when you have to endure because a lot of entrepreneurs I see a lot of younger entrepreneurs I speak to as a virtue of being angel investor is that they're looking for a lot of action and very quick results and maybe I was also like that earlier maybe 10 years back but at least in the last 8 9 years is figured that any outcome will take multiple decades you know 10 to 20 years so if you start off with that mindset then you won't be in a hurry in the initial years and being in a hurry in initial years is not good because that's where the foundation is being set the building blocks are being made so i believe that for any success or any outcome mediocre outcome great outcome you have to plan for a 10 to 20 year journey in a startup and uh, i talk about it a lot i talk about the fact that people who can endure boredom are the most powerful people because they are at it every single day you know and if there is a game of attrition they'll win you know so i really believe that it is a very long term journey and you have to build it that way what is the biggest misconception of being a founder oh i think the biggest misconception is that people think it's really sexy and really you know hunky and dory i think it's the toughest thing i get a lot of questions i i get to meet a lot of young kids at campus when i'm talking to them they all want to be entrepreneurs and i i start off by saying don't you know because i you sh- i tell them that you'll get a good job uh, if you're an iit and i am and other colleges why do you want to do it how does it match your dreams and then of course there is this whole misconception sonia that you'll make your first million within first 5 years i think 80% founders will never make their first million you know so uh, that's the misconception which they have which can be cleared with data but they still have that positive thing that okay i can succeed but they don't know what it takes to succeed because startup is extremely tough of course you know i also motivate and also push a lot of people to start up and you know uh, i invest in a lot of young entrepreneurs but i think most people underestimate the effort it takes because your success is dependent on the customers the team that you build the investors that you seek and you know the outcome that you want because outcome is again uh, whether it's a ipo or a sell out or a merger it is such a complex thing i think only 1 in 100 companies can get the desired outcome so i think if i have to do some education in the ecosystem i want to talk about the fact that join an early stage startup there the success chances are so much higher because you'll get your salary you'll get your esops and if there is a good outcome then you will make money and then probably become an entrepreneur but i i tell a lot of young people to go join all these new age companies like like how i joined flipkart as a very young kid i that's the path i recommend a lot of people to follow but that was also a uh, a step you took which turned out to be in your favor yeah, right i yeah. mean and there's a little bit of luck in that as absolutely, well absolutely very lucky <laughs> so for over the next 10 years uh, where do you see the big trends in the startup world 
I don't see a very different trend, Sonia. See, there is a very so. What are the fundamentals of Indian startup ecosystem? One point four billion population, uh, almost hundred percent internet literacy, internet penetration, uh, railroads being settled now. You know, with fintech, uh, logistics, uh, internet, all of these things take been taken care of. So I think a lot of new categories will get created. For example, you know. Uh, iPhones did not exist 15, 15 years back, so smartphones didn't exist. So as smartphones became a category, all the people wanted to buy it online. You know, and Flipkart, of course, was a pioneer there. Uh, likewise, you know, online fashion, Mintra, Flipkart did that. So a lot of new categories will come by the virtue of the innovation happening, and all the internet companies or startups who have built the railroads will benefit. You know, tomorrow a new UPI comes or a new UPI equivalent comes. All the fintech out there with twenty, thirty, forty million customers will launch that solution on day one, right? So I think I don't see a lot of new trends per se. I just see that, of course, AI will play its part. Uh, it's not going to be an industry. It's going to be an enabler and will be a great tool, but it's not something which we. It's not AI is not equivalent to a fintech or AI is not equivalent to an edtech. AI is more on the lines of four G, five G. You know where. it will improve the quality of business but may not create a new business line altogether but i feel that next 10 years will be all about consumption uh, uh, india is still very underpenetrated when it comes to brands it comes very underpenetrated when it comes to uh, you know global travel so i think consumption is the next 10 year story for india absolutely as an entrepreneur i think the biggest learnings come from one's failures right so what has your uh, path been when it comes to failures and how have you dealt with it right i think three four uh, incidents i can think of of hand uh, the the first is my own uh, startup when i started off it was extremely tough i i tried for two and a half years three years uh, solo founder and very young so i think there were a bunch of a bunch of mistakes i made and a bunch of learnings but i think the biggest learning there was you know not uh, not going customer back when it thinking about the product uh, built a tech solution but didn't think about how consumers will use it etc so i think the whole consumer thinking was missing this at was Flip, youth pad youth right? pad yeah. yes and of course at flipkart it was a one hell of a journey i think uh, there was a time where we could do no wrong but then the first big billion day happened and that's where i think all of us had a learning that you know the it was a good learning that the market is much bigger than we thought the problem with the first big billion day was that we underestimated the demand the demand which we received was 10x of what we had planned for and that really opened up the ecosystem i think the first big billion day while uh, we had some uh, some struggles with the quality of experience that the customers got but i think that really opened up our minds that wow there are customers in tier 4 tier 5 cities waiting to buy online because you know it's cheaper there's a diwali sale happening but it was a very testing period because we really uh, learned a lot of lessons then of course uh, Uh, with pandemic uh, when uh, i was running cult alongside mukesh uh, those few months were very tough uh, gyms were one of the most hated industries then you know uh, it was shut for almost like 14 15 months and uh, zero revenue like no one could like food at least had 20 30 percent revenue because people were still ordering but gyms were shut and in fact more than revenue we had liabilities because we had you sold had all rent. these we had to pay rents and we had sold all these memberships which we had to carry on whenever we opened reopened so it was very very tough there's a bunch of learnings and i think the last 3 years given that we started in the peak of pandemic then there was a second wave when we were only 8 9 months old when the key of foods was i think last 3 years has been testing and i figured that that's the way businesses are built you know they are just topsy turvy curves that you have to you know uh, deal with almost every every quarter and uh, you have to derive fun out of that <laughs> and you have to be able to withstand boredom right as you yes, said yes. through That's the course the of your thing, yes. <laughs> through the course of your journey um so with mukesh when you had uh, yes. cult fit and of yes. course you went through your own yes. upheavals with cult fit uh, that entire space is also picking up in a big way yeah yeah absolutely uh, so why did you choose to sort of deviate to cure foods and yeah i think i uh, answered a bit of it uh, you know at the beginning so we figured that there are so many food categories that we want to cater to yeah. and not necessarily all of them are healthy so today uh, out but of the 50, i know it's also a very competitive space right it's a competitive space and also uh, sonia uh, out of the 50000 orders that we do today about 60% is healthy so about 30000 orders are healthy food but 20000 orders are also categories which won't fit into the cure fit ecosystem cure fit is about all health so we wanted to 
cater to all kinds of categories and it didn't really fit there so we hyped it off we wanted this cloud kitchen uh, business to have full potential and if we didn't have these categories we would be 40% smaller and so yeah so this whole uh, startup ecosystem now there's one big funding winter that's going on how bad is it at the moment and do you see that do you see any recovery in sight see from my vantage point i think that a lot of uh, mid sized companies who are looking to raise funds in the last 6 months have had it difficult i think uh, the 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 brighter side is that a lot of companies have turned profitable or on the verge of turning profitable a lot of fat has been cut a lot of experimentation money has gone out of the window so i think uh, it will at least i'm not i'm not a, I, i can't i can't judge the future but i think uh, i see that at least 6 to 12 months more of you know consolidation will continue and post that the companies which survive companies which are good will will have a much better chance at raising funds but the good news is that a lot of them may not need a lot of funds by then because they would have turned profitable would be cash flow positive so i think this one cycle was needed globally because we all contributed to that but there was a lot of froth and i think these resets are part of life just that this has been very long and very tough <laughs> so you were telling us there is a, there was a sort of froth in the startup yes. ecosystem funding right yes. uh, why do you think that is i think there was just uh, easy cash available sonia for various reasons policy reasons and pandemic and this and that so i think there was a lot more cash available earlier free cash available earlier and also there was lesser accountability demanded by investors from their entrepreneurs so as a combination of all of that there was lower accountability easy money and a lot more uh, maturism in the in the ecosystem i think all of that is now tempered down and you will see a lot more real companies around so with cure foods i do know that your although your revenues have been growing you are struggling a bit on the profitability side as is the case with most startups yes. right uh, how long do you think it would take for you to achieve profitability and what's the growth path looking like right so uh, this year we are hoping to end the year at about 1000 crore annualized revenue run rate not the full year number but the last quarter's uh, you know number extrapolated and that would be a pretty strong number for a food company i think in india there are very few 1000 crore food companies on a profitability side we are in the range of what minus 10% abeda and uh, we believe that in the next 3 to 6 months we should turn profitable uh, abeda profitable and then there's this longer journey of becoming pack profitable and what not but i think that will be a big milestone for me at least you know because uh, in the previous companies i've built have never been a bit of profitable <laughs> it's like i said it's a new for a lot of entrepreneurs startup entrepreneurs and we've focused very heavily uh, since day one so yeah on becoming a profitable company but we had an option of being profitable at sub scale but we had set this 1000 crore as a benchmark that profitability and 1000 crore should happen at the same time uh, we could have been a profitable company at a 500 crore revenue but then growing beyond that because once you're profitable then you want to follow some discipline so growing beyond that will become slower so there is no science to it there is no reason i chose that number but we said okay when we are a 1000 crore company we want to be profitable and that was the goal set uh, it's been tough profitability in food is extremely tough last 12 months the food inflation was on fire it is was a crazy time to be a food entrepreneur and different commodities at different points in time and then of course you know uh, during pandemic which is now 18 months back there were different reasons for inflation because supply was not that easy so i believe that uh as a food entrepreneur the margins will always be with for thin so you have to lead a culture of very strong frugal frugality and that's what you'll see in this company if i have to talk about one core value that we all live by is frugality uh we whatever whatever money we can squeeze out of our system we try to put it out on customers food we want the food to be the highest quality but everything else you know can be like <laughs> one notch lower you know the office space or what not you know we believe that all of that can be taken care of once you're profitable absolutely everything will have its own time so will this uh, profitability be achieved uh, through your own home brands or are you looking to acquire more brands from outside no more acquisitions in line now because uh, when we acquired we had a very systematic need for acquisition we said we need a biryani brand we need a pizza brand we need a weekday brand we need a weekend brand night evening lunch i think all of it sorted now i often to define, fill all the gaps in yeah, the portfolio i often define i often say that you know uh, the a uh, week is 28 eating slots seven times a week four times a day and not all brands can fit in everything i feel that we cover at least 21 22 out of the 28 slots which is very good 
so I think we not acquire anymore. Uh, we want to consolidate, and uh, most of our brands now are growing double digit uh, quarter on quarter. So I think uh, 70, 80 crores a month is sizable enough to give us enough. enough margin to cover for our fixed costs so uh, ankit also i noticed through your career you've pivoted a lot right you started with youth pad and then to flipkart which is e-commerce and now you're a food entrepreneur uh, is this the sort of need of the hour to keep reinventing yourself or it did it just happen by chance i think it happened by chance and i also feel that it need not be the right mantra because i think the benefit of doing something for very long is way more than trying new things you know so Uh, the way compounding works is very different you know so i would have preferred to be in one industry forever but it was not to be but i think with food now i'm really hoping to for for this to be a multi decade thing okay and finally before we let you go i'm sure your relationship with money has also changed a lot <laughs> since you started your journey uh, where what was your relationship with money earlier and what is it today Oh, tough one. Uh, earlier, uh, of course, uh, I was a seeker, <laughs> trying to make some money to you know to have a comfortable life. Uh, had certain goals, and thankfully with Flipkart, uh, most of that most of those goals were fulfilled. I think lately it's been more about you know uh, uh, me me and my wife uh, are heavily involved in our uh, foundation. We call it Simply Sport Foundation. and we uh, we help a lot of budding athletes. So I think lately it's been more about giving. and i think that's the cycle which uh, a lot of people end up following and i'm happy that i have started on that journey okay all the best ankit thank, thank you so much for joining us my pleasure thank you so much thank you so much. Thank, you. thank you thank you for watching cnbc tv 18 for all the latest news and updates do follow us on our social media platforms